Hello friends, welcome back to DigiTalk. And is in this session we are going to discuss about the WebLogic Diagnostic Framework. And along with the discussion, I am going to show you the execution as well. Okay, so WebLogic Diagnostic Framework is a very important feature of the WebLogic server, where we can do uh, the n number of monitoring with respect to the WebLogic server configurations and the runtime management beams. Okay, that means uh, whatever the configurations we we do from the WebLogic consoles and uh, and the, whatever the parameters that we monitor using the, the uh, different scripts and using different kind of automations okay those all kind of a configurations you can configure from the weblogic diagnostic framework as well you have the features where you can create a lot of uh, uh, the dashboard as well for different kind of a configurations like for the heap utilizations thread utilizations different states of the threads okay and along with that you can do the lot of configurations as well for the automation for example if i say about if, if if i say that i would like to take the automatic thread dumps when there is a stuck threads on the weblogic server on any of the managed server or even on the admin server then you can configure it with the help of weblogic diagnostic framework as well if you wanted to raise certain kind of alerts if it's for example if any time you see that the threshold for uh, the heap utilization for your managed server is going beyond the 80% or 85% and you need an alert in that case. So, you can also configure those actions as well with the help of uh, this uh, WLDF framework. Okay. So, it has a lot of different features. Okay. There are a lot of features and then a lot of functionalities that you can enable with the help of uh, this particular framework where you can create different kind of a diagnostic modules you can create different kind of actions and you can create different kind of policies and as i said with the help of your dashboard option okay you can configure uh, you can use the pre-built dashboard okay and along with that you can you can uh, create your own dashboard as well right or to display a lot of different parameters you can see on the screen these are the different dashboard that are the custom dashboard that has been created with the help of WLDF for monitoring the different kind of a heap utilizations, thread utilizations. Okay, similarly, you can create your different views and in the with the help of that views, you can create your uh, different matrices and based on that, you can create a different type of a charts. Okay, whether a bar chart, pie chart or any kind of a chart that you can create. Okay, and you can enable the such kind of a monitoring with the help of WFDF console as well okay and apart from that it has a lot of different features as well like as i said you have to configure the actions and policies or if you can uh, you can enable the jfr as well if you would like to take the J java flight recording in certain kind of situations then you can enable it from here as well along with that you can configure the diagnostic images or you can configure the diagnos diagnostic images to capture the data and all this data whatever the data that it has been taking as i said if it is creating a different kind of a dashboard based on some historical data so it has to persist that monitoring data as well somewhere right so by default it is stored complete data in the default file store which is the file based file store right of the weblogic but if you wanted to change that file store if you want to store that monitoring data in your database then also you can configure at that with the help of this wlfdf features okay so now i am going to show you two things one is how you can capture the data for that you don't need to do any kind of a configurations along with that if you would like to configure your any of your managed server to automatically take the thread dump in case of any structured found in the logs okay then you can configure with the help of policies and actions okay so let me first show you how you can capture the images for your uh, servers okay so for that one is very simple you have to go to your weblogic console okay and then you have to log in to your weblogic console oh sorry weblogic one two three okay and once log into your admin console you have to go to the diagnostic and there are a lot of uh, options are there log, log files diagnostic modules built-in diagnostic modules diagnostic images request performance archives context all these features uh, everything is dis described in this particular uh, lab document okay so this is the part of the lab document and handbook from the <coughs> digitoc so if you need to purchase all this document all lab documents okay along with the handbook then you can write us on digitoc.fmw.gmail.com we will send you the complete instructions how you can buy that one it is available on the bare minimum cost 
okay it contain all the complete detailed information along with the step by step instructions and screenshots so you don't need to go for any training you don't need to go for any expert advice you can do it everything by your own okay so now to take the uh, image okay you have to click on the diagnostic image so here it will show you all of the running servers so as of now if i go back to my servers and if i will show you i have two managed servers and one admin server because it is showing only the admin server because this is running as of now only okay so let me go back and again click on images so the destination directory where it will going to store the complete capture images it will capture for the server is inside the logs diagnostic images and this logs is inside the root directory of your servers and what is the root directory of your server which is your uh, domain and then servers folder and then the name of your admin server or managed server okay it is created with the name of your admin server or managed server inside that you will have a folder and then logs and inside the logs you will have a folder called diagnostic images right so this is the default path for your diagnostic images which is defined here right if you would like to change this path you can do it from your um here as well okay and then let me go to uh, logging let me go click on my admin server logging and then diagnostic images so this is the part defined here okay you click on your server once you click on the server click on the logging tab and then click on the diagnostic images tag so this is the path which is defined here if you would like to change this path you can specify the path here and it will create the diagnostic image inside that particular directory right so now let me go back to diagnostic images and let me click on the managed admin server so now before that you can see that there is nothing inside the diagnostic image it is completely blank right and now let me click on the capture image okay it will prompt you for the uh, directory and then the timeout for to take the diagnostic images once you will click on that one it will depend on the kind of applications you have deployed on your managed server kind of a configurations you have it will take some time and after that once it is generated you will see a archive file is created inside the diagnostic images folder it will be there for each and every server right if it is i am taking for admin server if it is for managed server you have to click on your managed server and then logs and then it inside that it will create a folder now diagnostic images so as of now i have taken for only admin server so let me go back there and let me show you so this is the archive directory right if i extract this one to show you what all other contents are here so now you can see that this is the folder and these are the different snapshot of your complete configurations specifically for the admin server it has taken cluster information application information deployment jfr if it is enabled it will take the jfr automatically as well jdbc jms all of this configuration complete snapshot at that particular moment when we have taken it okay for example if i click on the work manager so the total number of that count is 13 idle set counts are 0 standby 11 queue depth is 0 queue departure and then mean throughput and the total number of requests 2 this is the screenshot this is the data when we have ran the diagnostic capture for this server couple of minutes back similarly if you click on the jvm.xml then it will show you the heap memory used the free committed and then what is the peak thread count at that particular moment in this particular managed server right and then along with that it will show you a lot of other information as well important information as well okay and then apart from that you will take the backup of the configurations of the complete uh, which is targeted to your admin server and apart from that there are a lot of other parameters which you can verify with respect to logging and then with respect to jms if you have a jdbc configurations it will show you the complete data inside your jdbc file okay so this is how we can take the diagnostic images and how we can capture it from the admin console so you don't need to do any configuration for that one you just need to go back to your diagnostic images click on your server and then click on capture images after that go back to your domain inside the domain go to the server folder if you have taken it for managed server click on managed server then logs directory inside that click on diagnostic images and there you will find the particular zip file extract that and then start your analysis this, so this is the first way uh, from this document okay where you can take the diagnostic images right now second i am going to show you how we can configure policies in action as i said if suppose that you want to take the <coughs> Uh, thread dump automatically in case of any stuck thread in your managed server or an admin server for that you have to go to your diagnostic modules and first you have to create a diagnostic module okay let me take give the name as auto thread dump okay 
and then click on OK. So now you can see that we have a diagnostic model created with the name of auto thread dump. Inside that, click on that and then click on policies and actions. So here you have a policies and actions, right? So what are the policies that you are going to define and what are the action you wanted to take when the policy executed? Okay, this is how the policies and actions are work. Right. So what I'm I was saying is that I want to take the auto thread dump in case of any structured found in the server log file. So for that, I will click on new. And type I will select thread dump because I need to take the thread dump, right? So click on next one. You have to give the name for your action. Let me give it again auto thread dump on script threads. Okay, so this is a timeout that you have to specify when your server will go to take the thread dumps and your server is not responding. What is a timeout for that one? Number of thread dumps, how many thread dumps you wanted to take? It is always recommended to take more than one thread dump. So let me specify four and then you have to give the seconds between the each thread dump. So whenever you take the thread dumps, we take certain kind of a gaps between each thread dumps. For example, the standard is you can take at least five to ten seconds. So let me give it ten seconds. Okay, and then enable the action and then click on OK. Okay, so now we have an action is created. Right, which is to take the thread dumps, how many thread dumps you wanted to take, which is the, what is the interval between each thread dump. Right, and this is completely specified here. Okay, this is explained here in the document with the complete screenshot and step by step informations. Right, okay, so now what, I, what we need to do after that one is we have to define an action for this particular policies for this particular action. Okay, so now click on policies okay and click on new so write the policy so let me write auto thread dump policy right and for policy type i will take the server log because it has to read the server logs for the stuck state right stuck threads and enable policy click on next one and now this is a policy expression so policy expression is something let me show you here as well okay the policy expression is it is based on the java el language okay this is a standard language that we use in the scripting okay and it for expressions it use the syntax of that one okay so if you are going to configure policies and actions you have to bit read about the different kind of expressions that you can use along with the accents right so we have defined the action to uh, read the stuck thread so whenever there is a stuck thread it come with a code double triple zero three three seven in your log files okay so for that one the matching expression is this is which you can completely copy from this code this file okay and then you can specify here right so this is the configuration that we have given here right so click on next okay and there is an alarm okay so we have to use use a manual reset alarm of let me give it a this is an auto second let me give it 600 okay so use a manual um, uh, alarm okay for that you have to specify the 600 so what is the 600 second is there so whenever there is a stuck thread in the log files it will send you the alert it will generate the alert and after that it will wait for the time period or the seconds that you have specified here so this is the value of your alarm okay and this is explained here as well okay so what is the meaning of alarm right so as of now we have given the 600 value that means it will wait for the 10 minutes so that means whenever an alert is generated after that it will wait for the 10 minutes for you to take certain kind of actions and then this policy will run again so this is more on the alarm you can take the complete knowledge from here on from this document right and then click on next and here you have to select the action that we have created right and after that you have to click on finish okay so now you can see that we have a action auto thread dump stuck thread right and then corresponding to that we have an policies right and this we have targeted on the admin server right so now what will happen is that whenever there is a stuck thread in your admin server because we have given the target as an admin server right so uh, at that time it will automatically generate an alert and it will send it to you in the log file okay and let me specify the target for action as well let me go back and target okay right so we have given the target for policies it is applicable for your action as well right so 
this is the way how we can configure the actions and policies in the WLDF to automatically take the thread dump. Similarly, you can configure the multiple other parameters as well. And what are the different parameters for you can go back and actions and click on new. And you can see that what kind of type of actions that you can define related with the JMS, domestic image, JMS notification, SN. TP trap, third dump, heap dump, scale up, scale down, script and rest. There are different options that you have there which you can use to create the different kind of actions and the corresponding policies according to your requirement. Okay, so all these informations are completely explained in this particular document in detail along with the screenshots. Right, so thanks for watching this video and stay tuned for the next video.